Welcome to Scribes and Songsters. Today, we're going to talk about how to encourage children to use their imaginations and how a singer-songwriter and a visual artist make music together. I'm Veronique Mandel. Welcome to the show. My first guest is Windsor's Chad Price. Chad is a full-time culinary chef, and now he's also an author who published his first book for children titled Just My Imagination. Chad has created a book designed to encourage children to step away from their electronic devices, get really creative, and to use their imaginations to see the magic around them. Welcome to Scribes and Songsters. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, you're you're good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> you're having fun with having this book. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of fun, actually. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're a chef. I was expecting you might have written a cookbook. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of people ask me that. I just, it's an idea I had a long time ago, and uh, I love cooking, so it's hard to uh, give up the cooking. But yeah, I, I, that could be in the back of my I mind. I was going to say, for, that could yeah, be in your yeah, future. Something in the future, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what inspired just my imagination? Uh, honestly, about 20 years ago, I just was, you know, you play the cloud game when you're a kid. Oh, sure. And... Uh, I just had this idea, like I was looking outside one day and I, you know, I seen a cool cloud and I took a picture of it. And then uh, right off of that, I'm like, man, like this would be great as like a book, you know, for kids. Cause when we were kids, that's all we did. You had no electronics to own the car. That's you played license yeah. plate or a cloud game, you know? So how old were you when you started looking up? Uh, when I was a kid? Yeah. Oh, when we were young, three, you know, five, six years old, we were kids loving the cloud game. Like that's all we played, you know? Uh, but uh, I started the idea for the book when I was about 19, and I'm 38, so. <laughs> that took a while. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it took a long time. <laughs> When your kids are on their electronic devices, do you encourage them to get off? I mean, how, how oh, difficult yeah. is it? Because obviously you have a real purpose in yeah. trying to sort of encourage their imagination but how difficult is it oh it's so difficult but i mean we're on a schedule i give them their hour uh, hour and a half a day oh, and that's good. all you get and then if they don't do that they, you know we take it away give them the little yeah <laughs> but uh how old are they uh uh 11 or sorry 12 7 7 and 6. so you know and the book is good up to say 10 year old even yeah. my 12 year old she likes it it's not like she's right into it but the younger kids, they love the book. They just think it's great. So yeah. I'm getting a lot of good feedback from it, actually. So, so have you taken it to schools? Yeah, yeah. I, I actually took it to my son's school, and uh, they're they're setting up a reading to do there. So I'll do a reading at the school. And then um, one of my friends works at the Montessori school, and uh, she put it in her art class and kind of just the kids loved it. They were drawing pictures of clouds, and she said they got so much ex excitement from it. So it's going well. I'm getting out there. Like it was just published January 31st. So we're working on it, but yeah, I'm hopefully it gets a lot. I mean, I get a few more schools from this uh, TV. Or <laughs> <laughs> so now you decide you want to publish it. Take us on that journey from you deciding you'd like to publish it. Uh, Not an easy journey. Is no, it? no. It's like I said, it's been 20 years. So I, when I first started, I sent just a kind of pre-made I made the book myself. I <laughs> no, thought it was Do you great. have any artistic <laughs> talent? <laughs> no, so I sent that out. I kind of didn't get a response about it. And uh, I, I put it on the back burner. And then, you know, as years went by and I kept thinking like, I, I just have a feeling in my gut about this thing. So what do you know, 20 years later, I you know what, I got it out. I redid the book. I got a nice copy and then I sent it to New York. And two so, months. So when you say you sent it to New York, oh, exactly what did you do? I Well, I I uh, got the book together. I wrote a nice letter stating that it's taken me 20 years to get this far. And uh, I let them know that I tried. So did you go in uh, online? And oh, yeah. Yeah. Publishers? Yeah. I went online and I just I looked up the most popular publisher right now. And oh, you might as well go for the most yeah. popular. <laughs> <laughs> so Austin McCauley popped up and uh, Honestly, it was right on in New York on Wall Street. So I thought That's a right good away, place. Oh, I thought like, got money. They're doing something. <laughs> so I sent it to them. And then, uh, you know, like I said, it, it, uh, about a month and a half went by and I was like, ah, nothing's happening. You know, I did another no. 
And then what do you know? I come home from work one day and the letters in the mail says Austin McCauley. Like, I was, I, I'd even open it. I called my mom right. I got a letter. Like, I don't even know what it says. <laughs> and, you know, how unique is it to get a letter, not an email? Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's so personal. And, like, that made me think, like, wow, like, it's maybe it is a, a good idea. But in the letter, it just said, uh, we looked at your copy. We really like your idea and we're going to be in contact with you. So, I, I, I didn't say nothing. I just let it go. And then yeah. what do you know, two weeks later, they called me and then. What are know, they like to work with? Very good. They're an amazing company. Like we, I, the process was so easy and like I was so involved with the process right from day one, right to the day of publishing. Like they were always on me and using my ideas, not just forcing what they wanted. So that was a really big part of it because I had a picture in my head of what I wanted it to be and they like let me roll with that they and didn't. so it was pretty much the way it turned out yeah yeah it yeah. is it's it's exactly like and i wanted kids to be able to be interactive with the book also so that end of it you know they just let me go with that idea which was awesome you know yeah now who's the little fellow on the front uh that's my son jackson how yeah. old is he uh he's seven now but when i was doing the book he was you know about five when i got on the track of redoing the book so that's kind of a little picture of him when he was What does five. he think of being on the book? Oh, he's, you know, he tells everybody I'm yeah. in my daddy's book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote a little thing for him at the, in the cover of the book and, you know, he tells everybody he's so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do they sit around as a, a group with your children? and? You yeah, know, yeah. Oh, I have three other stepchildren too with my yeah. son. And yeah, like when I first brought the book home, they were just begging, you know, waiting for it. I gave them all a book and that's that was their whole night. It was awesome. You know, it was yeah. a good, good family feel like I'm just a hometown guy from Windsor. And they send you this thing from New York that yeah, you did. It's like blows your mind. I'm still, it's still surreal to me. Like I still, but. No. Did they print a certain number of books or is it print on demand? Um, they, they printed a certain number and then they sent me uh, copies for myself mm -hmm. and uh, like, Amazon and Indigo and everybody has the book online right now. Uh, so they had orders for them that they have printed, but I think they're printing on demand or as they get orders um, as it goes, but it's going really well so far. How much is it selling for? Uh, the hardcover is $26 and the uh, soft cover is 14 Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's really yeah, good because it, to get a hardcover. Yeah. Um, um, printed as well. That's, yeah. that's quite some. But it's a good investment. Kids get a good read out of it and they, it's useful to them. It's an over and over use. It's mm -hmm. not just you read a book and throw it to the side like a lot of books. I don't want to give any hints out to it. It'll be a surprise. But <laughs> yeah, I do have a second and third book idea that's on the way. And uh, I'm gonna, I am actually just started working on the second one. So hopefully we get that out in a year and then we'll see how that goes. Are you going to continue to make it interactive? Yes, always interactive. So the kids have something to do. It's not just reading a book or looking at a picture. They're going to have their input in the book, which mm -hmm. is important to me. You know, kids, with the, I, it's so mindless stuff. You know, yeah. like you want them to think and be involved. You know, yeah, it's great. So, um, will you ever now? Another thing I you do that I don't know if you still do it, but I know you did, which I thought was kind of interesting. Is that you're a licensed or um, a qualified exterminator. Yeah. Who do you exterminate? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of a jack of all trades type yeah. deal. And I just, uh, I heard some people talking about <laughs> exterminating at a, a get together one time. They're like, yeah, you make so much money, like you do this. I was like, okay. I looked online, see, and I go, I'll go take that course. And I took the course, ended up passing. And I was, I owned my own business, a uh, spider spraying business just for the summer. Oh, know? is that you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh yeah and i did i i did that i still it's been five years or whatever it's a yeah. good little side business on the side it's great and you know meet a lot of people and all that so so could you see like a book about spiders in your future uh maybe actually that's yeah that's a good idea i never really thought about that end of it but yeah maybe we could do something like that yeah you have yeah. some really sort of interesting parts of your life yeah where even uh, the chef book yeah you could make something there yeah. interactive yeah 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 that's great that's that's actually that's so, all right you, uh, you you're just so come smart. back and you're see good. me <laughs> <laughs> i think i'll stick with you <laughs> yeah that's great so now are you do you have any bo uh, book signings lined up with that people i, could I do to? uh indigo i'm working on it with indigo right now um we're just in talks like to get a date down yeah. but um 
you know, my Facebook following and whatever, I'll pub I'll put it on there and hopefully I get a lot of people to show up. But it's it's a little bit of a process, but it's coming together pretty nicely. So hopefully within the next two months I'll have the book signing at Indigo. Right in Windsor. Too. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone should look for it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Best of luck. Thank you. Yeah. I Thank appreciate you. it. <laughs> well, in just a few minutes, you'll meet my next two guests, Windsor singer songwriter Robbie Agnew and visual artist Kennedy Snively. But first, here's a music video produced by Kennedy featuring Robbie singing his original song, Slipping Away. Like the time we fought all night Couldn't agree on anything or anyone You've come to try Again, I don't believe you're right There's a piece and understanding come undone Yeah, I don't want to spend another day Without you by my side I'm slipping away I'm slipping away This place I'm slipping away I'm slipping away Promise that you'll always kiss this face Working out All the differences we had All the troubled times They're all in our past I'm worried One word that we will say could erase the progress that we had made Yet I don't want to spend another day Without you by my side I'm slipping away I'm slipping away I don't want to ever leave this place I'm slipping away I'm slipping away Agnew is a Windsor singer-songwriter and actor who recently was a finalist in the Raise Your Voice singing competition. This led to Robbie signing a contract with 360 Entertainment. Kennedy Snively, who produced the music video you just watched, is a visual artist. She works primarily in the music industry with hip-hop and pop artists from Windsor to Baltimore. Kennedy co-directed the soon-to-be-released short film called The Key. Robbie and Kennedy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you very how much. How are you both? Yeah. It's a pleasure Great. to be here. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. So, how do you two know each other? Um, we met through a mutual contact. Yeah. Um, I'm signed with 360 Entertainment, and Rob Palumbo introduced us. Mm -hmm. And I was impressed with her work, and we had a meeting, and... Then all of a sudden we got together and created magic, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I just want to go to the video for a sec. Sure. Can you explain the stole, the, the stole that you, the woman drapes on oh, you? Oh, of course. Yes. Uh, Kennedy, do you want to? <laughs> sure. Um, so the, the point of the video is basically he's slipping away from his roots and he's becoming more famous and more successful. 
and he ends up coming back to himself. But basically, that is a giant metaphor for being rich and successful, the fur coat. So um, we wanted to make it clear kind of where he was going with it and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Now, now it all yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Hidden, min- hidden, yeah. hidden meaning. Yeah. Hidden meaning. Yeah. So now, how did you start your career? You started um, when you were really young? Yeah. Career is a, a word for it. But yeah. I started in high school, of course. And uh, I was what in the school doing? plays, yeah. the talent shows and things. I did the Indigo Night performances back in the day. Um, but now, then, Were these musicals that you were in? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. I did like the Rocky Horror Picture Show and things like that. And then talent shows at the high schools. Um, but then I think around maybe a year ago is when I really got serious about trying to pursue something in music. I did the Raise Your Voice competition, like we said, yeah, and uh, got second place there and uh, really gained a lot of connections, uh, really found my sound and uh, really learned how to perform live and to interact with audience members. Mm-hmm. What was your sort of your inspiration? Who were, you know, what genres influenced you? Of course. Well, I was first um, really intrigued by Ed Sheeran and singer songwriters in that vein you know Mm -hmm. and uh but now i'm actually into a lot of like independent pop artists so people that really experiment with sound and uh try to make their own unique spin on things right so i just like everything stripped down raw and really pulls you in emotionally that's what i really look for in songs now yeah and songwriting did how long have you been writing um writing i've been writing probably since grade 10. Uh, it started out about girls, you know how it is in high school, right? But of course. Of course. <laughs> when else is yeah. someone in grade 10 right about? Yeah, you have to woo them, right, somehow. So uh, me and my band members, uh, we were called Anonymous back in the day. Very <laughs> mysterious. Um, and uh, we wrote, wrote about our crushes. We wrote about uh, what it would be like to grow up and things like that. But nowadays, I try to write about, um, you know, family members, uh, hard times I go through, sometimes depression, sometimes great things, you know, success and things like that. Uh, but like slipping away, I wrote about sort of like if something was to materialize in music, would I slip away from the people I loved or would I stay true to them while also pursuing my dreams? So that's sort of the message. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's an interesting and uh, accurate message because it often happens to people, yes. especially in the music business, when they get up there. Exactly. They forget the down there. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sure. And you were writing about relationships, God, before Taylor Swift. <laughs> I know. I should have been on YouTube quicker. Tell yeah, you that. <laughs> exactly. Now, you um, have a combination of talents. You're a visual artist mm-hmm. and a filmmaker. Yes. So where did you, when did you start doing those things? Um, well, I've wanted to be an artist since probably like your parents first asked you as a kid what you want to do. So I used to, I think I envisioned as a kid like painting, but that's just the typical thing you think when you say artist. And then uh, I would say about grade eight, I started becoming passionate for, for films and movies. And then in high school, I think when you mature and and you grow up and you go through harder times and face reality and stuff, I started relying on music a lot to help me. So that's when I gravitated towards the music industry because I feel that I can fully put myself into that and be passionate and work with passionate artists and stuff like that. Yeah. No, I I mentioned that you uh, do hip hop and pop, Mm -hmm. but... What influenced you? What genres of music influenced you early on? Um, I'm with Robbie with the independent, the indie sound. Um, I grew up to a lot of punk rock and a lot of alternatives. So the Beatles and Green Day. So those are forever dear to my heart. Yeah. And then when I started kind of forming my own identity, I gravitated towards hip hop and indie pop. So um I think a little bit of everything kind of influenced yeah. me. Big Sean's yeah. a big, one of her favorites, Big Sean. Oh, yeah. She got, yeah, he got me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is. So what made you gravitate to the university for film studies? Um, I, I was between two universities for film. It was always going to be film. I was very hmm. sure. A lot of people kind of went through the struggle of not knowing what they wanted to do in high yeah. school, but I was always very sure. But um, I think it was just it's local because I'm from Windsor and that was the cheapest option. And and I looked into the programs and they had one that said film in it. And that was it. Yeah, (laughs) I didn't do that much research. I just went for it. Now, when you were younger, did you did you make films? Did you? (laughs) 
Yes, yeah, yeah. of course, the, Tell the horrible me about little home movies, yeah. yeah. Um, I used to play on iMovie and GarageBand all the time as a kid, right when we first got the Apple computers, and I think that's where I realized I loved it, even though they were, if we went back and watched them now, they're horrible, right? And um, So who did you have in your films? Like, what did you, what did oh, you do? Um, I think the first time I did a short film that I wrote a script for and planned, <laughs> Uh, we did a horror film for some reason, because I don't know. And because that's what young people yeah, do. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why that's where we gravitated. Yeah. But um, it was for a high school project. That was the first time. And then uh, from there, I would just kind of experiment on my own with like, I would take a song that's already created and take my own footage and make like a little music video just for fun. Stuff like that. Kind of anything that comes to my head. I don't like to close off in a yeah. box of like one thing to do. So it's really something that is in you I think so yeah. yeah yeah for sure what's it like trying to make it in the music business uh it's incredibly challenging and stressful yeah uh, but it's exciting as well um sort of researching how other artists have done it is a great tool um it's all about getting your name out there uh playing around town musically mm -hmm. uh making great friends who can help you and you can help them it's all about just working hard being unique and true to yourself and uh making great melodies and lyrics and great music. Yeah. And what venues are there in Windsor, Essex County? There's quite a few great venues. Um, I play at the Sidebar Lounge sometimes, and there's other venues. Um, I do, there's like um, just a lot of bars downtown that really are open to local artists. Mm -hmm. Now, are they paying? Yeah, they pay you. Um, it's usually between 150 to $200 per night. Oh, that's good. Uh, you play about three hours worth of songs, so it's uh, yeah. nothing to you're, scoff you're, at. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of material. You earn your money. <laughs> yes, yes. You have to know your words. You have to know your lyrics. And uh, yeah. you have to know the crowd, too, because certain songs really appeal to certain crowds. So you don't want to have all slow songs. You know what I mean? Right. You also want to have upbeat, up-tempo songs for the certain crowds. So mm -hmm. say someone's getting rowdy in the audience. They want to hear Guns N' Roses or Journey. But if they're sort of wow. lounging around, sort of laying back, they want to hear maybe Elton John. So it's about adapting to your surroundings. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you also work in the U.S.? Uh, I have a few times, yes. Yeah. yeah. And how does that compare? Um, it's all very similar to me. Every artist is completely different. Yeah. Um, their creative process is completely different. Some of them like to be really involved. Some of them don't. I haven't noticed a difference between Canadian and U.S. other than the fact that I have to travel. Yeah. But it's great. I love being able to travel all around the world and meet different people and stuff like that. Sure. What's the process of getting to do a music video? Um, a lot of it is contacts and a lot of it is social media. Um, most artists nowadays, they, they blow up on social media because that's where they're putting out their content. That's where people mm -hmm. are noticing them. So once you kind of have a few contacts or you've heard someone's music and they're looking like either they're asking for a videographer or you're advertising yourself and you just get in contact and then from there uh people hear about you other artists that know that artist want to talk and stuff like that so it, it once you get one it's it kind of spirals is it competitive um i'd actually say it's more you know Collaborative. Um, I actually yeah. just got asked today by one of my friends to perform locally in a couple days. Yeah. So we all really try to help each other out. Of course, there's people that are very competitive mm -hmm. and they shut themselves off, but it depends on the person. But for the most part, I've had a great experience in Windsor, in the Windsor area, about people really helping each other out. And uh, to Kennedy's point about social media, it's crazy. Like I have one song out so far, and I already have you know 6,300 people on Facebook who are following my career at wow. Robbie Agnew Music and it's just it's incredible the amount of people that like the eyes you can get on just one uh, little video or song so I'm really happy with it. Yeah. It certainly revolutionized young people start you know young I mean new people getting into the business and, sure. and trying to break in hasn't it? Yeah it really opens up like an opportunity for everyone doesn't matter where you came from or yeah. your background yeah mm -hmm. it's impressive yeah. So where, like, what are you, are you both working on something together now on your work? You've done a short film. I've done several short films. Yeah. yeah. Um, we are releasing our newest short film uh, next month, I believe. Yeah, it's edited and just going through the last touches. So yeah. tell us about that. Um, it is a post-apocalyptic film. Um, it's basically what we want it to do is make you question, um, kind of like love 
when other things don't matter anymore and um, make you look at it differently. So it's kind of a different take on the whole zombie apocalypse thing. Yeah. Where'd you film it? We shot it um, actually here in Windsor, uh, right on Windsor Dragway, an abandoned raceway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it to to shoot in a, any community locale? I mean, how much process do you have to go through and permissions and all that? It's it's a little bit challenging. Um, a lot of people won't take you seriously um, if you ask, or a lot of people don't like their property being on camera or them being on camera. Mm -hmm. So you have to go through a lot to get permission, and then sometimes you don't know who you're even asking for permission. So it takes a lot of pre-production. Yeah, but it's always worth it. Yeah. How costly is it to get a, a production running? Um, you can do it for zero dollars and you can do it for like a yeah. hundred million dollar budgets yeah. in Hollywood, right? Um, the more of a budget you have, the more production design and the more actors you can get and the more um, props, everything costs money. So very briefly before I have to let you go, yes. what do you do when you're not playing music? Do you have hobbies? Yeah, of course. Uh, I can go first. I play uh, tennis in my yeah. free time. I love tennis. Yeah. Um, I also uh, I love movies, so I go to the WIF Festival. Oh here. yeah, absolutely. I saw Parasite, and it blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad it won Best Picture. Um, so yeah, film, uh, tennis. Yeah. How about you, you Kennedy? Um, I grew up an athlete, so I love to uh, kind of anything hockey. Soccer, You're a real Canadian. Um, yes, yes, very much. <laughs> Um, and honestly, I hate to say it, but I love listening to music, discovering music. Um, I think 99% of my life, there's something playing in the background and like 80% of the time, I'm probably focusing really hard listening to it. Yeah. Well, I wish you both great good luck in your future. Thank, so Thank you very congratulations much. Congratulations on your video. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah. You're yeah. Welcome. Well, unfortunately, that's it for us here on another episode of Scribes and Songsters. My thanks to our guests, Chad Price, Robbie Agnew, and Kennedy Snively. Thank you to producers Brian Sweet and Gary Glass. Grateful thanks to Tony Toldo Jr. and the Toldo Foundation, and to Neil and Tina Queering. And of course, big thanks to you for watching. Please come back and join me here again on Scribes and Songsters. I'm Veronique Mandel. Bye for now.